Hey, how's it going guys? JK here. Today, we're learning how to run the Moonshine business in RDR2. We'll be talking about buying the business, location, setting up, supplies, selling Moonshine and more. Right, we've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in. So guys, the Moonshiners roll costs 25 gold bars to purchase. Now, don't go out and buy gold in order to make the purchase. Rather, increase your XP in dollars by doing anything. Stranger missions, bounty hunter missions, if you're a trader, deliver produce and do more supply missions. Anything to grind out more XP dollars and gold until you've got the 25 needed for the Moonshiner business. Now, when it comes to locations, let's have a look at our options. We can go up in the mountains, the snowy region of the Grizzlies. Guys, really, that topography up there is rough. Now, we're going to be transporting delicate moonshine bottles and rough terrain, mm, lots of rocks. There are roads up there that aren't even properly marked. We're going to have a lot of damaged moonshine bottles. The more isolated area of Headington Stead, not too bad for deliveries, but you waste a lot of time circumventing the canyon and this can cause frustration and you can become impatient which leads to you traveling too fast trying to do shortcuts and you end up damaging moonshine bottles in my experience if we look at the bayou quite a popular area for many a pretty good all-rounder generally gives you good access for carrying out all your moonshine tasks I think one big plus in the bayou is there are plenty of wildflower uh, and herb locations for your different moonshine recipes then we've got tall trees again an all-round popular location um, not bad one good thing it's placed right next to Manzanita post that means you've got quick access to fast travel if that's something that uh, interests you and lastly a very popular area is the heartlands area an open area pretty good access when it comes to sale locations there's a couple of which one is just down the street from your uh, moonshine shack um, to the fence at McFarlane's ranch right let's get this moonshine business up and running <laughs> hey I'll drink to that in order to get our moonshine business up and running we go to Maggie and she'll give us a mission to go and steal the equipment and supplies we need In the next order of business, Maggie will have us rescue a top moonshine cook who has been kidnapped by one of the rival stills. With these missions up out of the way, you want to head over to Maggie's desk and she'll take you to the Moonshiner's store. This is where you can buy a bunch of stuff to upgrade your Moonshine shack. Considering we're running a Moonshine business, I'm sure you'd agree the first item we need would be the bar expansion upgrade. Keep in mind, you don't actually make money from selling drinks. You buy the bar expansion upgrade using some tokens which you can get from the Moonshiner's roll menu. Once you have these, you can then purchase the bar counter from Maggie. Next is the decor and here you've got uh, four different styles that you can choose from for your bar. You get a basic, then the floral, the hunter and the refined decor. I went with the refined decor but remember these are just decorative styles. They don't affect your bottom line or your profit uh, from your moonshine business. Next is the business upgrades. This is where we start upgrading our moonshine business with items that will affect our bottom line. That is, cut our running costs and increase profits. At level 5, the condenser is unlocked and then the polished copper still upgrade at level 10. But before you buy, keep in mind, you can get the polished copper upgrade for free if you link your Twitch Prime to your Rockstar Social Club. With a condenser, we're able to produce average quality moonshine produced from mash while the polished copper upgrade lets us distill the most profitable potent moonshine 
There are a bunch of cool items in this business upgrade section. However, we've covered the important items that'll have an effect on your bottom line. Nonetheless, grab a drink, put your feet up and browse through these other very cool items that'll certainly add to your immersive experience while running your moonshine business. Hey guys, I'm excited. It's coming together like pebbles in a tide. We're doing well. I'm proud of us. We've already got our first two missions under the belt, which means we've got the equipment we need to start producing, and we've got our top-notch French moonshine cook, Marcel, on board. So, we've got everything we need to start producing our first batches of moonshine. Granted, we are only able to produce a weak moonshine to begin, but we won't let that deter us. We're going to grind on diligently to level five where we can purchase the condenser that'll let us produce average strength moonshine which is great but we've got our sights firmly set on level 10 for that polished copper still which will enable us to produce jet fuel moonshine the strong stuff the potent stuff those are exciting goals but in the meantime let's get accustomed with our moonshine business dashboard as you can see our moonshine business has three divisions the first bar at the top is our mash think of this as all the ingredients Marcel needs to produce moonshine the next bar represents our flavoring division once Marcel has a batch of moonshine ready we can then add a flavor to the finished moonshine and the one at the bottom is the moonshine Marcel Marcel is producing. Marcel can produce moonshine without flavor, but if we want to sell the moonshine, we need to add flavor to it. As a novice moonshiner, the price of mash is going to be high. It starts at $60, and at that price, you're not going to be making much profit selling moonshine. But relax, don't throw a wobbly. You're able to reduce the price of mash by completing various moonshine missions. To do these, go and have a chat upstairs with Maggie. Some examples of these are destroying revenue agent roadblocks, as well as destroying rival bootlegging stores. The missions are fun, and what's more, you get about 300 XP for each mission. So look at these missions favorably. It's a win-win situation. You earn about 300 XP and from what I can see it reduces your mesh price by $10 each time. Great, now we've got a nice routine of completing moonshine missions which will continually reduce the price of mash whilst also increasing our XP. In your early days as a moonshiner, you'll only have weak mash available to you. However, once you hit level 5, then 10, average and strong mash will become available too. Once you have a choice, be sure to use the strongest mash available as this brings in the most money for your moonshine. So currently, weak mash produces 20 bottles in 30 minutes. Average mash produces 20 bottles in 45 minutes. Strong mash produces 20 bottles in one hour. Then later, at level 15, you unlock a boost. This will speed up production as follows. Weak mash will produce 20 bottles in 24 minutes. Average mash will produce 20 bottles in 36 minutes. And strong mash will produce 20 bottles in 48 minutes. Right, let's look at flavoring. As I've mentioned, it's important to always use the strongest mash available. But before choosing a flavor, first make sure you have enough time to produce it. To do that, check the timer in the bottom left corner where it says buyers reset. The timer currently says one hour and eight minutes. If you're able to produce the flavored moonshine within that time, then you'll be able to secure a higher price from buyers in today's requests. Now, Bert Higgins will always buy your moonshine, but at the lowest price. The buyers who pay the highest prices are listed under today's requests. In the All Recipes page, you can see what ingredients are needed in order to produce the flavor. So before producing a flavored moonshine, we need to check the buyer's reset time, make sure there's enough time to produce the moonshine for one of the buyers in today's requests. Depending what level you're on, choose the strongest moonshine available to you. In this example, it's a weak moonshine. At our level, weak moonshine will take 30 minutes to produce. We know it takes a approximately 10 minutes to deliver a flavor and we currently have one hour and eight minutes which means we can produce in time to secure a higher price from one of today's requests. 
The flavors come in one star, two star and three star flavors, each requiring different ingredients. The two star flavors make the most business sense to me in that even though you get paid less than a three star flavor, the three star flavors often require the addition of collectibles like collectible alcohol or collectible wild flowers, which you could sell to Madame Nazar for a higher price and more XP than if used in a moonshine flavor. As far as getting the ingredients for flavors, the quickest is to go to the catalog and simply browse through the provisions and order them. But make sure you remember to collect your package from the post office or your camp box. You could go to the general store and buy them, but that is time consuming or you could just loot them while exploring. While you're completing various tasks and missions, just kill two birds with one stone and keep a lookout for herbs, then stop and collect them. The most commonly used ingredients in moonshine are berries. So be sure to stop and collect as much as you can as you'll always need berries. Buying herbs from Madame Nazar is a sure way to waste your hard earned money as she charges a dollar per herb, so rather find them in the world. Upon your return, always check the timer as this resets itself every two in-game days or every 96 minutes. See what buyers are available and if you have enough time to produce a flavored moonshine for sale to one of the buyers in today's requests and if all's good, then produce it and sell it to that buyer. Let's talk about selling moonshine. Us traders can handle a wagon off-road and cross-country like a bat out of hell. And nine times out of ten, we don't damage either the wagon or the cargo. Guys, this is not the case with the moonshine roll. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. It's really hard to damage pelts as a trader. But when it comes to delicate ceramic glass moonshine bottles, think again. And it makes sense to drive care. You stick to the designated route. Don't even think about taking shortcuts regardless of the route being really long and boring. Stick to the route. Even if the off-road terrain looks smooth as glass, don't be tempted. For some reason, the minute you go off-road, you start losing moonshine bottle. A lot of folk have bitched and moaned about this fact, but that's the game. And that's how Rockstar's coded it. So stick to the route. Another danger you'll encounter are revenue agent roadblocks. For some reason, when moonshine traders come up to a roadblock, they get scared as a deaf bat and start shooting up a storm to kill anything that moves. Every route will have a roadblock. But what most moonshiners don't realize is there is only a one in three chance of having your illicit shipment of moonshine discovered in your wagon at the roadblock. However, when most moonshiners come up to a roadblock, they usually stop their wagon and open fire on the agents. People, the problem with this is it only takes one stray bullet from a revenue agent's gun to hit your wagon load of delicate moonshine bottles and you're losing coin big time. What's more is the agents will start spawning. So now your problem is even bigger and they'll start chasing you, increasing the risk of your moonshine shipment getting damaged from flying bullets. So what do you do? You stop at the roadblock and take your two out of three chances of getting through without even firing a weapon. There are three things that'll happen. Firstly, they wave you through the roadblock without even having to stop. Secondly, they stop you at the roadblock and they check your wagon. Then they wave you through without any incident at all and thirdly they stop you at the roadblock they check your wagon and then you hear them say we got lucky boys fire them then you get off the wagon and this is important move away from the wagon don't hide behind your wagon while shooting the agents as your shipment will get damaged so move away and then kill everybody so always take your two out of three chances of getting through the roadblock scot-free without incident and then you won't have have anybody chasing you and you limit the risk of damaging moonshine bottles. Let's talk about delivering moonshine. Okay, by now I think you agree that moonshine is really delicate to transport. So you've got to keep an eye out for any obstacles in the road, rocks or ditches, anything. Some of the routes can be quite tricky to navigate safely. For example, this route all covered in mist through the bayou gave me the heebie-jeebies because I was terrified of damaging my moonshine. So what I did in this situation was switch to cinematic mode. This lets the AI take control of the wagon and I just control the speed. 
So basically, the wagon now drives on auto cruise. Another method is to draw your gun and aim. You don't have to aim in the direction you want to travel. You can aim your gun anywhere and again the AI will take control of the wagon. This is great for driving safely over difficult terrain and of course also so that you can shoot the enemy knowing the AI will keep your wagon safely on the road. If you're wanting to go faster than the AI, you can take back control at any time. But just be aware that it only takes a small rock in the road to damage moonshine. And don't think that one bottle of moonshine won't make a difference. It most certainly does. It takes a big chunk out of the money you get for delivering the moonshine. So guys, it's really important to have the right mindset and to be patient and do everything in your power to deliver all 20 moonshine bottles intact so that you get the full bonus payout upon delivery. So let's just sum up. Stick to the route. Don't go off-road. Stop at roadblocks. You have two chances out of three that you will go through the roadblock without even firing a weapon. Take care going over railway crossings. They can also damage your moonshine. So guys, we've pretty much come full circle in this guide on the moonshiners role. I must admit, I'm enjoying this role more than the others so far. There's something about owning a piece of property. I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm thrilled that Crips can't move my moonshine shack all over RDR2. I don't know about you, but each time I enter the shack, I feel a sense of ownership, a sense of belonging and knowing we're building up a business. Makes it feel like home. I love hearing Maggie having a go at Marcel and Marcel moaning about prices, etc. and quality. It's like coming home to a family. A normal family, where everyone's got their gripes and moans, but they also have their happy moments, which we all share in. While making this video, I think I got to rank uh, 6, so I could unlock the band, but unfortunately, my cash flow is still a bit low, so I couldn't purchase it to have it playing for this video. But to me, that makes it all the more real. That's the real world in a struggling moonshine business back in 1899. Gotta tell you, man, I love this game. So guys, I wish you all the best with your moonshine business. One last parting tip. Remember to always pour yourself a drink before going on a mission. If your moonshine was made with a three-star flavor, you'll replenish your health, stamina, and dead-eye cause. If it was made with a two-star flavor, you replenish your health and stamina, and likewise a one-star flavor will replenish your health. So keep it in mind, it's quite handy to quickly top up your cause before heading out the door on another moonshine mission. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, toast the like button. If you learned something new, shoot subscribe. Shoot that bell icon straight in the nuts so you don't miss the next video. It's been a blast. Have a drink on me. Cheers for now.